welcome back. Um, been busy working on some new stuff for heavy paint, as usual. Uh, I'll quickly go through it before we get into the painting. Um, so, this is something that's been requested a bunch. Let me turn down the volume here, I can't hear myself. More doom for today. Anyway, so today, uh, the main new thing in this version is tool settings. What the hell? Oh my gosh. Sorry guys. So tool settings, you can save them now. So if we're over here in our tool menu, there's a plus button and this is our tool stuff. So we can say for default tools, which are all of these, the regular tools that we o we've always had, you can duplicate them. So now we have fill two all the way down here. And, and so you can change this one up and do whatever you, you want to it, make it all weird. Um, you can also go <coughs> go back to our original and let's say we change draw to have a different texture and then we change the settings here to make it all crazy. And then I'm like, oh shoot, I don't, I don't really like this. You can go back here and click on the plus and say reset to default. And then now it goes back to the original factory settings. Um, and then also we can go down here and any new tool that we make or any duplicated tool we can say rename and call it uh, cheese or something. Okay. And then you could also, you know, bring in your own textures. Let's say you have had a cheese texture or whatever, you just bring it in and use it on our cheese cheese brush. Um, for now, uh, the the way that it works is it it will you, when you duplicate, it'll duplicate the type of tool that it is. So you know, like fill tool does pretty drastically different. Um, shapes than say draw tool so the next step is gonna be like when you make a new tool you'll be able to tell it what type of behavior to do like you could say draw fill rect circle line whatever type of tool that you want it to be I, I haven't added that in yet but it will be there but for now all you all you need to do is just grab a line let's say you want another line tool just duplicate that line tool and it'll have the the same type but um, but then you can customize this one how you want it. And then if you are gonna be doing this, you probably also want to be able to copy and you know export them and bring them to different computers and stuff. So to do that, uh, actually I need to add this. I, I need to make this more user friendly. But for now, the file for the tool settings is saved in um, app data. This this will be different on Mac and Linux. Like it's wherever your application data, system wide data stuff goes, and then it'll be in Heavy Paint, and then there's gonna be a folder called Tools, and in here you'll you'll see that all the tools that we just made, like the cheese tool and whatever, and then if you ever edit um, one of the default tools, let's say we we modify our draw tool and change the texture, you see it, it just created that tool right there. And if you actually open up the tool in a, in a text editor, you'll see it's pretty simple what these tools actually are. is just a, it's a little dictionary that contains a, all the settings of the tool here. So you could go in here and change these settings if you know what each one does, but um, it's probably easier to just do it inside the program because you can break stuff if you enter something wrong here. Oh boy. Um, let's see, somebody feel like a boomer with all the new tech? Okay, cool. I, I mean, I hope that's not a 
I hope you're okay with all this new stuff. I mean, it's it's still gen generally all hidden within that this menu, and you don't need to use it if you if you don't want to. Um, okay, so that's that, and then also um, Vajra recently just sent me another texture to try out slash tool, and it's uh, this watercolor texture. It's pretty damn cool. So let's test it out a little bit. And this tool uses the, uh, I don't know, it's, it's pretty magical, I think. It kind of looks like it spreads out with this uh, watercolor effect. Um, You can also oh this this is another new thing. Added a follow last and a follow first. So follow last is like this, kind of like this weird three D perspective effect. Actually, if you you know if we had a maybe lines type of a texture, I wonder what that would look like. So that's follow last. You you might um, recognize this. This is a uh, rake dots follow used use this type of uh, follow in the old version and then follow first is the basically the opposite of that um, let me get another texture here it follows they all point towards the first um, the first point in the stroke basically so I think that's cool too and then the size effect that's happening here is just distance. So if you turn off distance, it'll just not do that. Or you can do pressure too. Um, let's see, follow last again. I don't know which one is more useful or if these are useful at all, but <laughs> some some people really like like the follow follow uh, rake dots follow so I figure they'll probably appreciate that you can use it on any any tool now and then if you missed the last couple of streams there's also this nice charcoal tool also from Vajra he's a lot better at making these uh, textures than I am actually my textures are kind of lame <laughs> But I'm hoping that with this new uh, tool system here, that you know you guys can start to experiment with making your own textures and stuff. So hopefully, you know the heavy paint community will come up with way better ones than what's in here by default. These are all kind of ver pretty basic, and um, I tried very hard to keep them like. Actually, no, I don't know. They, they, there's just been, there's room for improvement, definitely, <laughs> on these, these textures. Um, hello, Jaden. Um, so, aside from that, what else do we have? I think everything else is... Oh, we, we got pages in now. This is like the first... Uh, old version ha used to have pages where you... you if you want to make a new uh, canvas, you just go up here. Oh, oops. You got to do a couple strokes first. And then you can say new page. And then you can go also go back to your old pages. And it's like a sketchbook. So I like, I like this because uh, then you don't have to really worry about naming your files or thinking about um, where to put your files or anything. It's just very low... Uh, yeah, when you're working, you you just want to flip to the next page and don't don't worry about it. So that's the sketchbook, um, and you can still export and save, you know, two specific file names if you want to, and all that. Um, okay. So this is a nice little boring item. I thought I might try if y you know you you older people in here might remember the first the first iPod right I don't know this is actually the first iPhone see it has the, the phone buttons there it's pretty pretty amazing 
Yeah, I remember when this thing came out. Everybody was uh, going crazy for it. Had this big old antenna back then. Crazy stuff, huh? Okay, so let's see. Mm -mm -mm. Mm, yeah, you kids don't don't know how how good you have it now. Too. Every phone is an iPhone now. Just kidding. Just kidding. Okay, so I kind of wanna. I don't know how I'm gonna get the watercolor thing in here, but try. Anybody in here remember this this old uh, iPhone from uh, what year was this? Ninety five. Bit too much col color jitter here, I think. It's amazing that they got such a small uh, CRT on this thing. It's like the smallest little CRT ever. Just gonna try to make a mask here. Let's try uh, watercolor. I don't know if this will even make any sense, but oops. CRT is this uh, old style monitor, you know, the big ones, the giant box, box type monitors. I think it's called, I think it stands for cathode ray tube. And it's like shooting little gamma rays or something at a light sensitive 
I don't know how it works. It's it's some crazy technology. I love color jitter. Yes, color jitter. So f it is pretty fun. Makes it feel a lot more lively, I think. This is an extremely boring <laughs> product. I hope it's not too boring. Let's see. I like painting boring things. I feel like painting boring stuff is kind of getting in style now, even. Like uh, Nick Nicholas Arib and all those type of painters are all like trying to show off how boring they can paint or like how boring of a subject they can pick while still making it cool somehow um, and yeah I, I'm kind of into it I think it's fun kind of get sick of like pretty things painting Oh, let me do reset. Let me see. Reset to default. There we go. Got a new chair yesterday. I hope it helps my back. But honestly, I think the whole back thing is just like back pain is just because I'm sitting way too much. So probably no chair will really help that problem. But 
it's softer at least I've been using like this um, Costco just like you know super basic regular you know conference style chair for the, for the longest time I'm just like well maybe I should just get something with a cushion at least And then on YouTube, there's like billions of office chair reviews now, which I really, I, I don't remember there being this much interest in office chairs until this year. Because <laughs> like all the, there's like, there's office chair videos with, you know, hundreds of thousands of views. Um, so I guess that's cool. <laughs> It's really hard actually to find uh, chairs for shorter people though. I don't know if you guys, any of you are in here are uh, like five foot seven or less. Cause I feel like most chairs um, for me, they, they kind of like the seat bottom cuts into my legs a bit. And like all the measurements are a little bit off. Uh, so it's not really like ergonomically correct. It's really hard to find chairs that fit. Damn, 95th percentile. But I was thinking maybe uh, to get like a Korean chair instead, because maybe like, you know, Korean people might fit better with, with me um, in terms of dimensions, so. But it's hard, really hard to find reviews on Korean chairs that aren't in Korean. <laughs> and then all the Chinese chairs, which are basically all the ones on Amazon come from China, but they're, the problem is they're still de designed for Western markets. So they're all like, um, you know, the measurements are still off. I guess I could get like a kitty chair too. Maybe I can get a baby stool or something like toddler stool. <laughs> Just sit on that. Or, I don't know. It's stupid. Just Can you add back the color bar? It's there, man. Just gotta go up here to the top left and then color history, it's here. Um, I just don't really use it, so I turned it off. Gotta dig around, guys. Dig around, explore. Aeron has three sizes. Most people fit B. Yeah, I think, like, I've, I've used Aerons at work and they were extremely uncomfortable, but I think I had the wrong size. So, yeah, maybe I gotta try a smaller one. I feel bad for like the super uh, short people because I I feel like I'm I, I'm like shorter but I'm not um, ultra short so it must be really really difficult uh, for people to find and same goes for super super tall people it's like must be a huge pain in the ass kind of interested in that kind of stuff like just design for different types of people and also like you know design for lefties is usually pretty shit um, I think that kind of like 
being lefty kind of made me more sensitive to shitty design because I I'm kind of like used to it <laughs> or I don't know like things are just always backwards it seems like uh, so but but now it's heavy pain actually like I started off making it all lefty but now I just I just make it righty because so many people complained they're like oh this is annoying I'm like why it's perfect they're like no it's backwards I'm like oh right I'm lefty you're righty I guess you're right then right yeah. so I feel okay about complaining about design because that's what I was like trained to do in school so it's okay I'm fine with with that kind of complaining I'm a trained professional complainer you know Phil Polly is not done yet. No. Uh, boo -boo -boo. Okay. I don't know why I'm painting this. <laughs> it's just so dumb.
Oh, is that a crash? Almost. So close. Okay, I'm excited for this little reflection thing here. Ooh. First, let me get the shadow. Okay, and then the let's put the reflection. Okay, this reflection I think will be cool. I'm just gonna make a little shape that we can use as a mask. of like the full outline of that whole reflection at full strength and then we can erase either erase away or use that as a mask well let's see using it as a mask so for a mask I would turn the volume way down low and then uh, make a new layer and clip down that layer and then we could use fill gradient maybe to airbrush in this uh, reflection over here it's pretty easy okay and then we have extra reflections of the looks like a ceiling Okay. Ooh, that's kind of nice. Fill gradient plus plus this uh, noisy gradient. Pretty nice. Okay, I feel a little bit better about this now. I need a shadow too.
this one should probably be more reddish. I'm not drawing all of these holes. I'll just cut it down. Um, let me ask you guys, what, what do you think of, uh, should I make, should this be the default for fill gradient with the noise or the regular kind now? So this is the noise version and then the regular version is more like just really, you know, smooth. What do you guys think? Smooth or noisy? Looks like scratchy, scratchy highlights there. Oh no, it won't let me undo. Oh, there we go. Whew. I guess there's something satisfying about these old connectors. More chunky.
feel like that went pretty fast. I might try to do something else too. Give this um, FJ Cruiser. Is that an FJ Cruiser? Toyota Land Cruiser. This is the, the Yunling special. I think he loves this. kind of hard to control honestly I think I'm gonna go to pressure that's better
Uh, hmm. Oh, back wheels way big. Lately I've been kind of drawing my wheels as triangles, or like diamonds, which kind of picked up from looking at Peter Chan's stuff, but it makes wheels a lot easier to draw, especially if you're using a paintbrush, because a paintbrush, or at least like the flat gouache type paintbrush doesn't li like to go around corners that much so doing it like in little polygons is kind of nice I guess because this this brush or this tool is kind of wide Very quiet today, you guys, unless the chat is broken again. It's okay, I'm used to talking to myself. I can do it. Talk to my imaginary friends. Mr. Ducky, Tamago, okay. kind of like how this charcoal's turning out though, not bad, especially without, even without any like tilt or anything, it's still getting some interesting effects. I gotta learn how to control it a little bit better. This kind of reminds me of like Russian car designer sketch style, which I've always loved and I wish I could draw like that, but so I'm always happy when if, if it kind of has like a Russian feel to it, which I think this does. Silently judging. Oh, that makes it better. That makes it less awkward. Thanks, James. I'm on trial for crimes against UI design. it do that you guys see that like it does weird stuff when you undo
this is ugly. Ah, it does, did it again. The undo. Strokes need to like go around radially for it to look good. Mm. Um, yes, there's move. It's a, uh, it's a bit hidden right now. You. Go up here, hotkeys, and then um, the move is here, period, and scale is slash. So you can go like that. I think I'm just going to leave this one as a sketch, maybe.
I like how low down this door handle is. It's like the lowest door handle I've ever seen. But that kind of makes sense for an like an off-road vehicle if you're if it's kind of high up. All trucks should have door handles like way down low. It actually makes sense. For the short people, you know? Rise up, my short people. We've been looked down upon for far too long. enjoyed using the recent versions cool I'm glad glad to hear all this is not is is uh, actually useful that's that's great <laughs> past a uh, couple months hasn't been a waste mission accomplished Oh, this thing has the sideways seats in the back. I'm a sucker for that stuff. Something about sitting sideways. Actually, if you're sitting sideways in a car that's moving forwards then it, it's like you're it's like you're perpetually drifting I guess I don't know I think going sideways just feels good physiologically just like your body likes sliding around I don't know
probably do another layer for this stuff, just in case. Affinity for moving sideways explains crab bot tutorial. Yes, I secretly wish I was a crab robot so I could move sideways more often. They will reach down for our handles and they will enjoy it. <laughs> yes, let's force all the tall people to, to reach down. You guys have had your turn. I want to really figure out this um, front shadow here. It's so hard to control this shit. Mm. 
Maybe when it's on none. Hmm. Yeah, I think. I'm gonna figure something out for this. Going sideways is hard to control. Which side that it pops out on. Or I can just not have that feature. Ugh. But it is useful. I'll figure it out. Apparently this is the, the original version of this song, which I didn't even know there was an original version. But I can see why maybe they decided to redo it because this one sounds like sounds like a bunch of Muppets or something. Probably piss off somebody when I say that, but it does sound kind of funny.
only thing I'm not really... This wheel is really bothering me. It looks like really splotchy, like it's got mange or something. I need to figure out how to do tires. just tricky because it's not really it's not black and I don't know maybe I just don't have control with this charcoal that little flashing thing is kind of creeping me out too just erase all that tire and try again. Ugh. Let me save, it, save this for a second. Oops. Oh god. The brush I'm using is built in to this new version. Um, if you go on heavypaint.app to the experimental builds, you'll have this one. It's called charcoal. Here. That's better, I think. Right? Simpler? Simpler is better, for sure. In this case. Kind of want to do the same thing with the wheel or the, the under this area. Make it simpler. I think with this kind of, I mean, the more that you can leave as a, like, I like the drawings where you have some information there, but then you also get to make up some of the information. So there's like missing, there's some missing parts that are kind of ambiguous, but then you kind of get to figure out the drawing as the viewer, I think is pretty fun. It's just my way of excusing uh, lazy drawing, but it's true. Like the sim the simpler one is so much better. Oh my gosh! I don't know what I was trying trying to do before. That is way better. I 
I feel like this is slowly turning into a painting, which is not exactly what I had in mind. But it's okay. Some white pencil on top. Get nice and swanky. I wish I could draw like the Russians. I don't know what they feed them in school, it's crazy. This is the closest I've gotten to a Russian drawing in a long time. I feel very lucky today. Come on! Undo! I think the key to a Russian drawing is you gotta use a big brush and you gotta make like giant uh, strokes. I don't know if I should shave off the top though, because it kind of looks cool all wrong with the weird edge there. I think that's kind of nice. I'll leave it weird.
Hey, Vajra. Yeah, got all the tool stuff in here. Um, I guess I'll show it again in case anybody uh, missed the beginning, but uh, this latest version's got a bunch of tool saving, or you know, you can make your own custom tools in this version, basically. So, first version of it, it's not perfect, but I think it's a good start. Um, let me save this actually. Do do do. Um, but yeah, you can you can save your own custom tools, and they'll actually be individually saved to your um, to this folder here, App Data Heavy Paint Tools. And so if I go in here. I can get the charcoal tool and say I want to make a duplicate of it and then here's charcoal 2 and you see it just made charcoal 2 tool and then this this one maybe we, we can put like another texture on it and um, different settings and stuff made a cheese brush earlier. It's not really cheese, it just... Anyway, and then also you can, you know, if you change your original tools, like fill or whatever, the basic tools, say you made it all crazy and you want to go back, you can go up here and then say reset to default Okay, and then it brings it back to like the default version of fill. So that was yesterday, or today actually. Just got added in. And then also, this thing got added in here. So there's a couple more follow modes, like follow last does uh, something like here let's go follow last does that it points all of the stroke to towards the last point and then follow first does the opposite everything points to the first point in the uh, in the stroke And then also we got Vajra's uh, watercolor thing in. This really cool texture that sort of looks like watercolor. It's pretty, pretty amazing. It sort of spreads out as you draw. So it looks like it's dripping or, you know, spreading like water, I guess. Pretty cool. So yeah, you guys pretty much have the ability to create your own custom tools now and you can, um, I guess, uh, share them and like, you know, you could get this and just send it to your friend and if they put it in this little tools folder, then they'll have your tools. Uh, I probably need to add in a way to do that without having to go into this file so maybe there's another option here like import tool or something like that and then you would be able to uh, just import these tools and also a save that saves it out to a specific uh, location that's not here um, now the uh, only other thing I'm, I'm a bit worried about with this system is that right now the tools are um, decoupled with the textures so uh, the textures are stored in another spot here. If you have any custom textures, like all these uh, whatever custom textures, you it would be here in this textures.cfg. And this is just a file that saves the locations 
of the textures not the texture themselves so that's like uh, this is much better for memory because you're not actually copying the files or anything when you you're, you're just like pointing to a, a location and using what what's already there but for exporting and importing tools th this might have to become like a thing where you um, maybe the the texture gets exported with the tool I'm not sure but gotta figure figure out what to do for that next anyway cool I'm I think I'm happy oh yeah this is the other painting we did so we did a first generation uh, iPhone <laughs> today for you for you guys who remember this one back in the day and then there's also the this truck which I completely ruined just now but it's okay because I saved it okay anyway have a good rest of your day I hope you guys will play around with this uh, new tool stuff because I know a few people have asked for that in the in the past okay see you next time bye bye